890 per Oh, you got it! Holy cow, you got it! All right, in our previous videos, we did a thorough examination of the suitability of various rifle cartridges for different long-range applications, and we're able to set up a system that helped you to streamline your cartridge elimination process and narrow down your options to those choices that would best meet your mission criteria. We also did a pretty detailed evaluation on projectile dynamics, and hopefully we were able to help you identify those bullets that would best suit your long-range hunting or tactical applications. So now after we have uh, a relatively good idea of where we're headed, we must, con uh, we must consider another key element to an effective long-range weapon system, and that is the rifle itself. And like I mentioned before, you're going to have a lot more liberty to choose your rifle than you are when we get to our optic selection. Optic selection is going to be very, very crucial. The rifle you're going to find here after we're done with this video, pretty much any rifle can be made to shoot very well. So uh, let's go on here. An, an accurate rifle in a nutshell. So what makes for an accurate rifle? Why do some rifles shoot well and others don't? What makes a rifle shoot well? Is it uh, long, heavy barrels? Is it super light, one and a half pound target triggers? Is it that uh, cool looking, unconventional sniper style stock with the adjustable cheek piece? I mean, what is it that actually makes a rifle accurate? Although these things we just mentioned can surely assist the shooter in using the rifle more effectively, these things are not actually what makes a rifle shoot better. So, uh, what we need to understand here is rifle vibrations and harmonics. Most any rifle can be tuned to shoot very, very well if one understands exactly what's going on and why. So we're going to start off with a little bit of a physics lesson here. Maybe you remember back from high school or whatever, uh, if you took physics, uh, nodes and anti-nodes and uh, harmonic vibrations and standing waves. I don't know if you remember that. So we're going to review this real quick. Uh, when you pull the trigger on a loaded rifle, the resulting explosion causes a lot of vibrations that reverberate through the length of the entire rifle, kind of like on a guitar string when you pluck it. These reverberating vibrations can result in what is uh, referred to in physics as a standing wave. Standing waves are basically stable patterns of waves that are oscillating back and forth. Uh, if you were to plot out the oscillations of a vibrating object, such as a guitar string or a, a rifle barrel, you'll notice some interesting anomalies. So let's uh, take a look at a standing wave here. Now you're going to notice when you're looking at this picture here that uh, there are places in which no vibration is occurring. These places are what uh, we call nodes. Guitar players such as myself are very familiar with how to create and manipulate these nodes along the length of the string by holding down the string against those little bumps we call frets in order to make all kinds of cool sounds, right? So uh, let's think about a long rope. You got a, you're flopping a long, loose jump rope back and forth to get that cool snake-like effect. And one thing you'll notice is that there is 
going to be sometimes if you get a standing wave going on, one spot somewhere along that string, usually in the middle, uh, that's going to remain perfectly stationary. And uh, the flopping back and forth of the wave is happening on either side. But that one spot stationary. That is a node. That's that spot. The node is going to be of particular importance when we're uh, trying to manipulate how the vibrations in our rifles occur in order to achieve uh, good precision results. And you will also notice there are certain places in which there are large amounts of vibration. These places with the largest oscillations or maximum amounts of vibration are called antinodes. This is where the most flopping back and forth takes place. These wildly flopping antinode re regions are what can cause some headaches for a guy trying to tune his rifle. So uh, think of the effects of a barrel flopping wildly back and forth as a bullet is trying to exit the muzzle. Not good, right? Uh, okay, so what we want in a rifle that will deliver a high degree of precision is the least possible deflection of the bullet as it exits the muzzle due to anti-node vibrations. There are actually several different ways to accomplish this. One way is to reduce the overall amplitude or distance that the flopping is occurring of the anti-node vibrations within the rifle so that when the bullet exits the muzzle, even if the muzzle sits far away from a stable node region, it will have only minor deflection as long as that overall amplitude is reduced. And the easiest way to accomplish this is by simply adding rigidity to the vibrating object. Now, like in a guitar string, adding rigidity can either be accomplished by increasing the tension of the string or by uh, shortening the overall length of the vibrating portion of the string. Like when a guitar player holds down a fret and it shortens the length of the vibrating portion, what you have is a decrease in how far back and forth the string is flopping, and that results in a higher pitch or frequency that you can hear in your ears, right? Okay, so uh, in a vibrating rifle, increasing the rigidity makes the amplitude of the anti-node smaller. This means less distance overall of flopping back and forth, although the rate of the flopping increases. This basically results in less potential magnitude of bullet deflection due to harmonic vibration, but a higher frequency of that smaller deflection. Did you get that? Basically, your amount of measured deflection will be less, a smaller amount of deflection but the uh, resulting vibrations of the smaller amplitude will oscillate back and forth faster. Most people consider this a, a fair trade-off. So by increasing the overall rigidity of your rifle system, you decrease the amplitude of the anti-node regions of the standing wave reverberating through your rifle and therefore decrease the amount of bullet deflection that can be caused by harmonic vibration. This is good, yes? Okay, so how do we increase rigidity of our rifles so that we can reduce the amplitude of the antinodes, which are going to be constantly throwing our bullets all over? Well, there are many ways we can accomplish this. The most commonly known way to increase the rifle rigidity is to use a heavy barrel. The thicker a barrel is proportional to its length, the more rigid it's going to be. So short, fat barrels are going to be more rigid than long, skinny ones. It's a matter of proportion. If you want a more rigid barrel, you can either A, shorten it. That'll make it more rigid because it will be proportionately shorter and fatter. Or you can just thicken it or get a heavier barrel. That'll also make the proportions more stout. It's the ratio of diameter to length, really. Now, barrel rigidity can also play a key role in reducing the effects of other problems, such as heat warp. And there's no doubt that heavier barrels seem easier to hold more steady. But the main advantage to a heavy barrel is increased rigidity, which reduces vibratory deflections of the bullet as it exits the muzzle. Another very important way of increasing the overall rigidity of a rifle 
is by ensuring a tight fit between all the components of the rifle. If you have an action that fits loosely inside the stock, you're going to have major problems. Not only will your overall rigidity be decreased, but the character and location of the nodes and anti-nodes of the vibrations along the length of the rifle will be constantly changing as the action bounces around inside the bedding of the stock from shot to shot. A loose fit between the action and the stock will result in wild inaccuracy problems due to the changing positions of the nodes and antinodes in relation specifically to the muzzle. One shot, the bullet might be exiting the muzzle while it's perfectly on center during its harmonic vibration. The next shot, if the action starts wiggling around in there, uh, the, the bullet might exit the muzzle at a point where it's at its maximum vibratory deflection, in which case... I mean, good luck getting any kind of consistent shot placement or grouping with that setup. So uh, if we are dealing with consistent harmonics that establish a standing wave, the system can be tuned in a way that will ensure the bullet exits the muzzle at a consistent point in the harmonic wave. But when we're talking about the harmonic vibrations in a rifle, it doesn't take much at all to really throw your harmonics for a loop. Even tiniest amounts of play in your stock and action can, like even one loose screw, and you'll get all kinds of crazy, wild, and consistent results. Most problems in accuracy can actually be traced back to something that was like just maybe a, a screw that was loose by half a turn, or uh, maybe bedding that wasn't perfectly uh, solid between the action and the stock. Uh, or even a, maybe a peripheral component like a bipod could have been slightly loose and changing the, the harmonic uh, vibrations of your rifle system. Any inconsistencies that will affect how the, vi the rifle vibrates can really throw you off target. So how do we ensure rigidity between the various components of a rifle to reduce the amplitude of our vibrating anti-nodes? Well, uh, one of the first things I would recommend is by simply just checking all the screws. I would go around and uh, make sure they're tight and that they stay tight. If they don't want to stay tight, you may have other issues to address. I mean, I suppose you could put like Loctite on there and that would be pretty helpful, but that's really not the best cure. The place with the most slop on a factory rifle off the shelf usually is the bedding between the stock and the action. And if you got sloppy uh, bedding, if you got a lot of play in there, that's what's going to cause your screws to kind of start wiggling loose. So uh, the money, the best spent, if you're trying to accurize a rifle, is to get it glass bedded or you even have aluminum uh, bedding pillars installed. This uh, just simply uh, tightens up the fit between your stock and your action. Just smear some glass in there and press it all together and let it solidify. Voila, your rifle will be way more rigid overall. And the bulk of your harmonic inconsistencies will pretty much be cured. This is especially important if you have a wood stock, like a wood rifle stock where the uh, individual wood fibers can compress over time. And uh, they can change with the uh, temperature and things like that quite dramatically and with moisture. So your, your uh, fit between your action and your stock gets sloppier and sloppier. Um, also in uh, cheap plastic injection molded type stocks where the areas of contact between the action and the stock are very thin and mushy at best, this can be a problem as well. So uh, a good way to cure that is to... Uh, do a good glass job, like take it into the gunsmith, just have them go through it and do a, a glass bedding job. Or, you know, even accomplished hobbyists can do this as well without messing it up. So uh, that's, that's probably the best way to increase the overall rigidity of your system as a whole is to make sure everything's tight together. And uh, you want consistent harmonics. The only way to achieve that is to have uh, everything be one solid piece. Uh, let's look at stock design. There are some uh, stock rifle stock designs that offer greater rigidity, generally speaking. Uh, some of the high-end fiberglass rifle stocks, like the uh, McMillan's and uh, the HS Precisions, 
and some of those nice ones like that are built very, very stout if you've ever held one. And uh, they're real heavy and they offer basically just increased rigidity. The same is true with many of uh, those uh, proprietary aluminum chassis systems out there. Like you'll see with the Accuracy International chassis system or even like on the AR30s and the AR50s, they have that aluminum stock. Um, they are basically very effective as long as they increase the overall rigidity of the rifle system as a whole. Uh, classic wood stocks are usually all right. As long as you can keep the actions bedded tightly, that's where you want to go to the, make sure it's glass bedded in there. Rigidity is actually one of the main reasons why, classically, the heavier hardwoods are what are commonly used in rifle stocks because of their superior rigidity. Uh, let's consider action designs and things like one-piece scope bases in, in relation to rigidity of your uh, rifle system. Most of your standard bolt actions available will give you basically what you need to get the job done. But again, the rigidity can affect the harmonics of the weapon as a whole. Generally speaking, your real heavy actions with fully enclosed um, integral scope mounts, like uh, kind of like these surgeon rifles we can show you here, or some of these other ones where you got the full en enclosation design where the action goes over the top of the bolt and everything, those are going to offer your maximum rigidity. You can notice how the scope mount is actually built onto the rifle action itself here on the surgeon. That really stiffens things up and offers increased rigidity when compared to the standard open top designs. You can stiffen it up quite a bit by actually just adding a heavy duty one piece scope mount rather than the streamlined two piece scope mounts that you'll see on, on many rifles. Uh, that's why a lot of guys in the tactical field like to do that one-piece scope mount. It stiffens up the rigidity of the action. It adds another kind of like cross member in there to hold everything tight. If you do that, you're going to want to make sure you uh, maybe you can retap the screws and use big heavy screws if you actually wanted to uh, act as uh, kind of a torsion bar to keep everything tight. But uh, also things like increased barrel thread engagement into the action can really stiffen things up as well. And uh, some of your custom actions like uh, have a lot more thread engagement for this very reason. Sometimes you'll see uh, some of those old military rifles, like the old Mausers and stuff, where they have that cutout on the side of the receiver that was used for loading stripper clips. Those types of cuts can reduce rigidity a bit. So if you're shopping around for an action to build a long-range setup, try to find one without the side cuts if you're going to go for a military action. Uh, they'll still shoot pretty good. I mean, they'll shoot just fine, really. But if you're going to be splitting hairs, uh, this is something you do want to pay attention to. Okay. Now that we've discussed ways to reduce the overall magnitude of vibration by decreasing the amplitude of the antinodes in a vibrating rifle, we need to discuss perhaps a lost art the art of harmonic rifle tuning. As we covered before, a standing wave has nodes and anti-nodes. We discuss the problems that occur when the bullet exits a muzzle that is vibrating wildly back and forth. And there's another way of curing uh, the problems associated with this uh, harmonic muzzle whip, basically. And uh, one of them was re increasing rigidity to just reduce the amplitude, but the other way is harmonic tuning. So let's look at this figure again here of the standing wave. You're going to notice again this area in which absolutely no vibration is occurring. These again are called the nodes. Now if we were able to somehow get one of these nodes to move down the length of the rifle towards the muzzle, it could reduce the amplitude of the maximum deflection at the muzzle. Can you imagine the possibilities? I know it may seem crazy, but it's actually something that's been done for a long, long time. Cartridge rel reloaders do it all the time. Although they may not be familiar with what exactly is going on, 
but they do it nonetheless. Now, other people may accidentally hit that sweet spot sometimes when they're playing around adjusting the bedding or if they're uh, modifying the length of the barrel, perhaps, or maybe they're adding muzzle devices or something that changes the harmonic vibrations of the rifle, they may not know why that all of a sudden their old deer rifle is all of a sudden shooting like quarter-inch groups at 100 yards. Was it magic? No, it's just physics. So uh, let's make this simple. A vibrating rifle usually has certain regions of tension along its length where the reverberation of the waves are initiated. And these are basically where your nodes are going to occur, where there's no vibration. Areas of a rifle which are far from the points of tension or have the least rigidity experience the most amplitude of vibration. So the area most vulnerable to these severe vibrations is going to be the muzzle. Think about it. It's far away from a point of contact, which is going to, or a point of tension like your shoulder, which is going to be a node where there's very little vibration. And it's uh, far away from, it's the least rigid part of the, of the rifle is the muzzle. It's a long, skinny muzzle sticking out there on the end of the barrel. So you're going to have the most uh, harmonic vibrations occurring at the muzzle in the anti-node region. So harmonic tuning can be done to correct some of the problems associated with this. One way to harmonically tune a rifle is to change the harmonics of the rifle by introducing tension or changing the overall vibrations in a way that move a node region closer to the muzzle area so that when the bullet exits the muzzle, the deflection due to the flopping back and forth of the muzzle is minimized. This is a tuned rifle. This is how sometimes you see rifles with long, skinny, cheap barrels and old crappy looking wood stocks that shoot like five shots inside your pinky nail at 100 meters. As long as the stock and the action stay mated the same way each shot and the rifle is harmonically in tune, the rifle zings them in there, right, one right on top of the other, shot after shot after shot. You know, sometimes you pick up that rifle off the shelf and try it, and it's just a great shooter. And you pick up another one right next to it that is uh, the exact same make and model, and it sucks. This is how big of an effect harmonic vibrations have on these rifles and how tiny, tiny variations can totally change the harmonic character of, of the weapon that you're using. So how can we manipulate these harmonic waves to get the node to where we want it to be? Well, the most common way people do this is to custom tailor a load that shoots well for that rifle. Different loadings project different harmonic signatures within the rifle when they go boom. So as a reloader adjusts his powder proportions or his bullet seating depth or anything that affects the pressure dynamics of the load, the resulting harmonic signature that resonates through the rifle is changed as well. As the reloader continues to modify the loading of his cartridge to be more and more accurate, he is actually timing the exit of the bullet from the muzzle to match the exact same point of the harmonic wave each shot. So if the, the vibrations in the rifle are consistent, a load can be achieved in which the bullet rides that wave in the exact same way on its way out the muzzle for each shot. So it's kind of like timing the bullet so exactly when the bullet exits the muzzle, it's in the same exact point of the harmonic wave each time. That just takes, you got to increase, because as you uh, change the load, you're, you're changing two factors, really. You're changing the harmonic character of the vibrations and the velocity of the bullet approaching the muzzle. So it's kind of, you just got to do it slowly and incrementally until you just uh, achieve good accuracy. And you'll see it when your group starts to shrink down. But that's basically what's happening. And sometimes everything works out just right and the exiting bullet is perfectly intonated with the vibrations of the muzzle. And that's when you get those one quarter and one eighth minute of angle results. 
So although the reloader may not realize it, he is simply tuning the harmonics of the rifle. Uh, there are some other ways also to help tune the harmonics of a rifle that are sometimes easier than custom tailoring a load for it. Sometimes uh, some of us don't reload. Some of us don't have the patience to, to spend a year in load development trying to find a good accurate load. So uh, another way is you can simply change the harmonic character of the vibrations within the rifle by tensioning the barrel in different places until the level of precision is maximized. Now, if you've ever played around with uh, some of the old military surplus rifles, like some of those old Mausers and the short model Lee Enfields, you might have noticed that little goofy-looking spring-loaded screw inside the stock underneath where the barrel is. You can't see it unless you take it apart, but it's pressing against the barrel from inside the end of the stock. Many folks have, when they're a sporterizing a rifle or taking it apart, they throw that thing away. They don't know what it is. That little screw they threw away was actually a barrel tensioner, which uh, kind of like holding down a string against a fret on the guitar, created a node in the vibration patterns of the rifle in a selected place that was calculated to reduce the amplitude of the vibrations specifically at the muzzle. So they were creating a node near the end of the barrel that would simply dampen the, the vibrations going on at the muzzle. See, those old military rifles were really thought pretty well through when they were designed. Uh, one can sort of mimic this device and experience, uh, experiment with jamming like folded up paper between the stock and the barrel and moving it back and forth to see if that yields any results. Sometimes it does, sometimes it, it makes it worse. It all depends on the harmonic character of your particular rifle because every one is completely unique. So uh, if you do locate a sweet spot when you're putting this paper down in between the barrel and the, and the stock for a tensioner, you can just remove the paper and then smear in some fiberglass or bedding compound at that spot. It's actually what I did with my old Remington ADL and 7mm Magnum that I picked up for like $200, an old junker. And that thing shoots awesome. It shoots like half minute of angle groups all day long if I do my part just using even junk ammo. So uh, sometimes it works really well. So to review here before we move on to other things, there are two main ways of improving the level of precision attainable in a rifle. These are the main ways. The first one is by increasing the rigidity to cut down on the harmonic amplitudes. And the other way that we just discussed is harmonic tuning, which you can either do through load development or by manipulating the harmonic character of your rifle in particular areas. So there's two ways to skin the cat. If you have an old favorite hunting rifle and you don't really want to change it up too much, but you want it to shoot better, I would first recommend simply getting your bedding nice and tight. Go down to the gunsmith, get it glass bedded. And then uh, tuning the rifle harmonically after that if you need to. But that usually uh, straightens them right out. The neat thing about harmonic tuning is you can get pretty much any old bolt action laying around to shoot just as well as any fancy sniper rifle package you'll see on the range. I've actually done this many times. It's uh, It really does work. I'm not lying. And uh, you talk to a lot of old veteran shooters and they'll confirm that as well. If maximum precision is required and you have a bottomless pocketbook, I would suggest doing both harmonic tuning as well as achieving maximum rigidity just to be safe. A guy can build a rifle with the most rigidity possible given his maximum weight criteria for his mission and then go back and harmonically tune that baby via custom load development or uh, manipulating the waves or whatever you want to do until that thing zings them in there one on top of the other, just like a laser beam. Problem with uh, increasing rigidity, though, is uh, beyond glass bedding, increasing rigidity can start to get kind of pricey. And uh, most of your custom and pri proprietary rifle components, like heavy barrels and uh, really, really heavy-duty rifle stocks made out of fiberglass that are of, of real good quality, these things can start to add up. They can get pretty expensive. 
So uh, basically, the heart of the overall message here is that when it comes to long-range rifle selection, pretty much any rifle that you choose that you like, cheap or expensive, can be made to shoot very well if you know what you're doing. So keep that in mind. So you got a lot of liberty uh, to choose your rifle. You are going to want to be very mindful of your projectile you'll be launching so you can select an appropriate twist rate for your barrel. But other than that, it's uh, all up to what you like. So let us now go through some of the other important aspects to these different rifle features that'll be important to make a note of. So we, we got the big one out of the way, harmonic vibrations. That's We got that figured out now. Now let's go back over barrels and stocks again and talk about some of the other things that are going on there.